My name is Christine France. I am a research scientist at the Smithsonian Museum Conservation Institute. I work in the very broad field of biogeochemistry. This field is really a meeting of three different sciences, biology, geology, and chemistry. It looks at the chemistry of past life, but specifically at life that has been preserved in the earth and in rocks. In my case, I work with bones and teeth of past humans and past animals that have been preserved in the earth and in some cases have actually become fossils. Within this broad field of biogeochemistry, I work very specifically with stable isotope geochemistry. Within that, I work as a paleontologist and an archeologist. I look at the chemistry of carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen in animal bones and teeth. So what that means is I really look at the very basic components that make up all animal and human bodies. Isotopes are just atoms that have a couple of extra neutrons and a slightly different weight. Carbon and nitrogen are in everything that people and animals eat. So by looking at these, I can examine diet. Oxygen isotopes are in the water that we drink and oxygen isotopes are a little bit different in different parts of the world. So by looking at the chemistry of oxygen, I can tell where a person or animal lived, if they migrated around, or maybe if they were an immigrant to a new area. This is all really important because it allows me to tell deeper stories about people and animals that are no longer living when I can put all of my data together. When we find an extinct animal, like maybe a woolly mammoth or a saber-toothed tiger, we can only learn so much from just looking at the bones. We can't follow them around and figure out what they were eating or where they were moving because they're no longer living. My analysis can give us some of that information and really help us understand maybe how that animal was a very important part of their ecosystem when they were alive. With humans, sometimes we're really lucky and maybe we have historical accounts or something that tells us about the life of that person, but most of the time we don't have that information. But when we can understand something about a person's diet or where they lived, that can tell us how that person was an important part of their culture. It can tell us something about their background. This all allows me to give some identity to people that have long since been forgotten. A recent project I've worked on involves a really fascinating archeological site from Elmina, Ghana in Africa. This is a set of human remains, all bones, from the coastal port city of Elmina in Ghana, spanning from about the 1500s to the 1800s. It was originally excavated by Dr. Christopher de Course up at Syracuse University and his team. The Smithsonian got involved through Dr. Doug Owsley, Dr. Kari Bruhlhide, and their team at the Natural History Museum who were called in to help with the osteological analysis. That's just the study of the bone structure and morphology. I was then asked to run the stable isotope analysis to provide a bigger picture for these individuals. We knew that we had a really rare opportunity. I have looked at a lot of historic North American human remains, including some enslaved African Americans. But without historical records, it is really hard to know where these people came from. Were they born in Africa and recently arrived in North America, or were they actually born into the North American slavery system? The population from Elmina in Ghana provided us with a really great comparison. We used the stable isotopes from Elmina to show us what a pattern should look like an isotopic pattern from an individual that was born in Africa and recently arrived in North America. We were then able to use this to actually identify some African Americans that probably were in fact born in Africa and recently arrived in North America compared to those who were probably born into the slavery system in North America. It was really exciting and, uh, and humbling to be able to provide some new information about this historically undervalued population. I love my work because I really love science, I love a good mystery, and I love telling stories. I get really excited when I get to start with a sample set that nobody really knows very much about. When I'm done, I'll have a story I can share that tells us so much more than we knew going in. When I can provide new information about maybe how a person lived or how an animal fit into its ecosystem, that can lead to a whole new understanding of maybe the anthropology and ecology of those people and animals. 
I really like seeing that domino effect when one person's research, maybe it's mine or maybe it's somebody else's, leads to that new understanding within the whole research field. When I work with human remains, I think it's really special when I can provide some identity to people who are long deceased. I know it makes me feel closer to my past. I think it can make a lot of people feel closer to their past when we can understand more about the day-to-day -day lives and the individual histories of our ancestors. And that's why I am passionate about what I do.